definitely seen an increase in the number of protests as it relates to social injustices, particularly from athletes. Mm -hmm. How involved were you all as students when problems would arise um, on campus or in the community? Or in the community when you were here? Mm. Well, I as I shared earlier, um, I did a lot of things behind the scenes, and that's how I am today. But now it looks like I'm being pushed out in the spotlight to a point where I am being asked to probably perhaps start doing some television and radio shows in Atlanta and in Chicago, but to address those issues because it's just ridiculous. My background, when I left here, I did work corporate, but for the past 10 or 15 years, I've been working for these big prominent white law firms as a paralegal. So now I'm getting out here, putting the work of what these white lawyers taught me. They know me very well in the circuit, but just like the North Carolina incident, I mean, I get calls about different things. Well, for instance, you know they're going to invoke, invoke martial law. No, sir, they are not. No, ma'am. They're going to, the government, listen to what I'm saying, baby. And I do it nice, pretty, <laughs> a nice, pretty pleading or document and put it up on my blog and forums for people to see, laying out the law. That was the intent, but we have a way of changing things. And just like with the North Carolina, those are things done to incite civil arrest so they can invoke that, mm. so the Klan can have control. I'm aware who the puppet string pullers are. And those are the things I'm out here addressing, but I used to do a lot of things behind the scenes, but again, now I'm being pushed this to the This is forefront. our sister soldier. Yeah, this is, yes. this, is, this is, yeah. Very involved. And I saw something on your website that's being rebuilt that says you're not running for president, but you're already out here doing work right now. Excuse me, you checked out the website? <laughs> yeah, I, I just got a call last Sunday. The guy said, you're all over the Internet. And he's like, the young people are all excited. I, I've been asked to start movements. Not so fast, baby, because we're going to do this within the law. Within the law. All right. All right. We're taking down this government. you. So that, mm -hmm. yeah. and even on my blog, I have on one thing when the Indians had control of the country, Red, white, and blue. Now you'll see it out there, red, black, and green. That's the way we're rolling. Okay. Most definitely. And FAMU, and that's why I asked you that, FAMU has been a university that's known for students speaking out, whether it's protests, marching, uh, signing petitions, whatever it may be. Was that a culture that was alive and well when you all were here? And how did you participate and, and find yourselves in that mix as student athletes? I, To be perfectly <laughs> honest, I didn't see a lot of that. Me personally, I didn't see a lot of that because we were just so focused mm -hmm. on school and you know I think and from the running. Greeks, you know, but it yeah, was, you would get you know you'd walk by something and it'd be some protest or demonstration. I came from uh, a high school that was what I think there were nine black seniors, mm. so it wasn't really. Um, I think that activism that came later for me yeah. or wanting to having a thirst yes. to learn as much as I could mm -hmm. about certain things along those lines there's this great book um, called The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander and it examines just mm -hmm. uh, sort of you know being at a disadvantage especially black men for, for so many reasons and you know how do you change that the um, incarceration, incarceration issue yeah, and yeah. um, it's almost like um, I don't want to compare it to but it's almost like when 60 percent 70 percent of black males will be arrested at some point or go through the mm -hmm. the prison system you know that's that says a lot and I think when you're at a when I got here it was a culture shock because you know as I grew up and military bases mm -hmm. and all that I, it was like I was one of 10 black people so I didn't really have that kind of activism um, but I did have a thirst to know more mm -hmm. you know more from books I think than from action do you all consider sports to be a platform that athletes should use to speak out on issues that affect them? Mm -hmm. yeah. If the I opportunity, I, I mean, if, I believe if, if that's the opportunity in your heart. presents itself, then to use the form. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree but as well. But you see that um, Von Miller, he um, did not participate in the national anthem. There go his endorsements. Well, so there's speak, a price to pay. Speaking for that. of that, um, what should an athlete do? A student athlete, particularly. Uh, do if they're told to censor or quiet their stance in threat of loss of a scholarship or loss of playing time uh, and in, re in retrospect uh, professional athlete losing out on endorsements what should an athlete do in that situation finding out basically what's in the contract 
um, because sometimes you can sign certain things away. But even the law, with certain laws, there are exemptions. They may say it's this, 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 but there are exemptions. So freedom of speech, um, that's in the Constitution. So these are things that we need to be aware of because they will try the fear tactic, you know. So taking a stand, and you'll be surprised how many people will rally and support you mm -hmm. when you do that. But finding out what's in the contract, that's why even with that, I tell them, be very careful because it's very slick. So sometimes it's just best to say I'm going to check with a lawyer or whatever. But there are um, also certain clauses or things you can write to make sure you don't waive your rights. But there's a price to pay, though. Yes. Awesome, don't yes, you? it is. Yes. It's a, there's a price to pay yeah. for. I think uh, you know the higher the profile. Uh, mm. That's when you start digging in somebody's pocket. Or Fearful. what if they, you know, there's free agent thing and he's. Uh, going from one situation to another, but he's got a label. Uh, where does Colin Kaepernick go from here? Right. And do you, feel it's worth it? do you feel it's worth it? Do you feel it's worth giving up maybe notoriety, playing time, coaches who want to bring you into their locker room, mm -hmm. endorsements? Is it worth it for standing on that pedestal? It just depends on the yeah. individual and what matters to, to that them. person, what they're willing to risk, uh, how they feel about you know their position and if that's what they're passionate about but you know in in sports it's image it's don't rock the boat mm -hmm. it's uh it, how you represent uh to you know potential corporate people and it's, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, like she said the corporate people in fear they play the fear factor because um i know how I was impacted when I worked corporate, then how I was impacted when I worked law. But one thing I would not do was compromise myself, nor my integrity, nor would I stab an uh, African American or a person of color in the back to climb the corporate ladder. Did it come with a price? Yes, it did. But that's the way, and that's the reason why I am who I am today. Because let people know, before integration, desegregation, we had our communities, we had Black Wall Street. But when you allow that to change or the system to come in and take over, then they start controlling. No, realize our accomplishments and let's do that. And that's why we're out here restoring a lot of our black communities, network with the right people that's not afraid of this system. And we're gonna, we're building Black Wall Street. And speaking of the system, is it? And Go ahead. Can I say this, Mary? Say this yes. because maybe, it, it, and she's passionate, mm -hmm, and maybe Mary. that person that's so passionate can assist those who want to speak up and maybe moving fo moving forward, he will not lose his endorsements because maybe you're writing the book or you're rewriting you know, the book. So oh, wow. it is, I think you have to be passionate about it, but you got to be careful because there, there are comes lives right. that yeah. you I'm, don't I'm, I'm just, That's why I'm saying yeah. it comes so. with a price because they have come after my job. I can go to another law firm. They will call it the law firm. This big, huge law firm, Baker Donaldson, Beerman, Caldwell, and Berkowitz, is running everything oh, oh, oh. and get me. See, I, <laughs> see, I deal with them. I deal Dang. with them. I, I pull off the hoods like Malcolm X said. There's going to come a time that if the federal government doesn't do it, we're going to do it. And at that time, even when he was, I was just a little toddler. But you're going to have the audacity to come after me, as I shared with the FAMU Relay women in 2011. Mm -hmm. When I left FAMU, if you would have told me in 2008 I would have been up in D.C., in December 2008, after Obama won, I would have just laughed. Mm -hmm. But if you would have told me that this government was going to try to destroy my life, I said I would have told you then they're fighting a losing battle. Mm -hmm.